A fundamental property of a communication system is its channel impulse response. When a transmitter sends a signal, the channel impulse response describes the output observed at a receiver. This concept is true for any kind of communication system, including diffusion-based molecular communication. In this video, I'm going to talk about one of the most well-known equations for communication systems that use diffusion. The equation is the channel impulse response for an ideal point-to-point -point system. It's a classical equation and one of the simplest solutions to fixed laws of diffusion. By the way, I presented fixed laws of diffusion in a previous video. This ideal solution has played an important role for a lot of molecular communication research over the past 10 to 15 years, including my PhD. To solve fixed laws of diffusion and get a channel impulse response, we need to describe the physical environment where the diffusion is taking place. We need to know the boundaries of the environment, so any obstacles that molecules could hit and what happens when they do, and we need to know any locations where molecules get added to the system or taken away. These details are called boundary conditions. Different sets of boundary conditions give different solutions to fixed laws, if a solution exists. It turns out that if the conditions are complicated, then there's often no solution that we can derive. Now a very simple set of boundary conditions is when there are no obstacles at all. We call this kind of environment unbounded, so molecules can diffuse anywhere and won't hit anything. Of course, this is never actually true, but if we're interested in studying an environment for a limited period of time, then we can ignore obstacles that are far away. Let's say that we have an unbounded environment and we add a molecule point source. This is a single point where molecules are created and added to the system. For the modeling, it doesn't matter how the molecules get there, they just appear. Let's also say that we have the simplest diffusion environment possible, so a constant temperature and pressure everywhere, no chemical reactions, and no flow pushing fluid in some direction, only uniform diffusion. For this system, the solution is the ideal point-to-point -point channel response, and it describes how many molecules we can expect at some observation point. This equation says that the average number of molecules observed is equal to the number of molecules transmitted, divided by a term that includes the diffusion coefficient, the time elapsed since transmission, and the number of dimensions, let's say three, but you could also use one or two, and this is all multiplied by an exponential term that includes the distance of the observer from the transmitter, the diffusion coefficient, and the time elapsed. This is an equation that varies over both time and space. It describes how diffusion waves spread out after molecules are created at a point. Since the point-to-point -point channel response varies over time and space, we can plot it over time or over space. For a given time, we can plot over space to really see the spreading of the diffusion wave. For a given location, we can plot over time to describe the signal that we expect to see at a receiver. Now, there are some practical limitations with this equation. I already mentioned the ideal conditions that are needed, no obstacles, constant temperature, and so on. We also don't have point transmitters or observers. Things that create or observe molecules usually need some physical volume to work. I've talked in a previous video about how molecule diffusion is a noisy process, so we also wouldn't normally see such a smooth signal. Nevertheless, we often use the point-to-point -point channel response either as an approximation or as a building block for the channel response in more complicated systems. Furthermore, the derived channel response is a starting point to describe the statistics of random molecule diffusion. We'll cover all of these ideas in future videos. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. You can like the video and leave feedback in the comments. You can also subscribe if you'd like to see more research highlights and tutorials on biophysical communication engineering. See you next time.